We are back. And sleepier than ever. Because we just watched a UFC event that didn't get over till literally almost 2 o'clock in the morning. But we're not going to sit here and bitch about that shit. We've got so much shit to cover, everybody. Um, everything. From UFC events to college football to pro football to basketball. But the first thing we're going to talk about is UFC fight night. Bisping versus Lee. In and Macau. In Macau. And we're only going to talk about the two most... You know, the two relevant fights, we thought, because we're not getting all into this other shit, because we can't pronounce half these motherfuckers' names. I mean, the shit is crazy. Look at this name. That name's all fucked up. I don't know what the fuck it says. Ning Guang Yu, Yang Kang Dis. I think I Young ordered Sun that. Kong. I didn't order that. <laughs> That's some crazy-ass names. But uh, let's start with the welterweight fight between Tyron Woodley and... The Dong, who George and I are a huge fan of, but not in that type of sense. But came out, uh, the Dong comes hard. Aggressive he and just missed on a spinning back fist, and Tyron Woodley just crushed him. He crushed him. And, and then the he, Dong went limp. Yeah. He obviously yeah. didn't have Seattle's or Viagra. And before this, last time we saw Tyron Woodley, he was trying to, to crack his way into the, the title hunt at right. his, at Welter. What's it, Welter? Wait. It's a Welter, right? And uh, Rory McDonald destroyed him. Yeah. But. I mean, he showed why he's coming along, but we obviously know he's going to have matchup issues with bigger, longer guys. Yeah, and that's the so. thing, man. It's like, you know, George and I talk about this all the time. You get these guys, these, I don't know if you want to call them second-tier guys. They're, they're all incredible fighters, but they go through everybody. But when they had the chance to really go to that elite level or to the top five of their class, they always fall short. You know, I mean, you see a little bit sometimes with Jim Miller in the lightweight class. We saw it with dude who was running second fiddle behind GSP for all those years. John um, Fitch. John Fitch. They just, they just can't get it done. And, you know, these classes are deep now. And speaking of guys who just kind of don't get it done, there's mm -hmm. a guy at middleweight who's been in the UFC forever. He's never had a title shot. And this is part of the reason why. Bisbing faced Kung Lee, mm -hmm. beat the dog piss. I mean, beat the dog piss out of the From little Kung treasure troll. face was fun. <laughs> Seriously, look at a treasure troll and look at Kung Lee and get back to me. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, look it up. He does look like a treasure troll. He looks like a treasure troll. He's got the spiky That can fight. I mean, and will fuck George up. And me up. Both of us up. But well, the only thing he's going to fuck up now is those movie scripts, because he should stop fighting. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he got nothing left to prove. Yeah, I mean, and he gets to a certain point where, you know, you're going on your reputation and stuff, but man, there's just such a new breed of fighter coming up that if you're not getting better every year, if your game is just staying the same, you're going backwards, you know? And and that pretty much summed it up for uh Biz being ended being. that in the fourth round. So he went into Macau and did exactly what he said he was gonna Macau. do. And that led us into tonight's event right. for us here in the States, which was I mean, for some of us it feels like it's tomorrow. Yeah. It, it, I mean it, it was it was long and it was not that it was so uneventful, but you know, the thing that we're gonna talk about, I think George is gonna agree with me, is that these cards are so diluted now. You yeah, know, Efo and, brought that shit. Yeah, up. Efo, he's here and he's in town. You know, and uh, I mean, you can't do anything but dilute your talent pool and dilute what we're. I mean, yeah, I understand it was free. The other ones on Fight Pass, that's ten dollars. Yeah, we're getting lots of content, but that doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, it just doesn't. I mean, I don't. Uh... Yeah, it's I and, I and you know what? It's it's not. I know there's going to be some people out there that say, "Well, Kevin and George." There's a lot of people on our group page. There's a lot of people that are saying, man, these cards have just been weak lately. And, and they're, you know, this is a time where he's got an opportunity real, it was right before football season starts, you know, and maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's trying to build the cards up for us so he can be competitive or well, have decent cards. And here's the other season. thing. I really don't understand why this, this card has to start at 10 o'clock on yeah. the East Coast. We went to the 9 o'clock experiment, and supposedly that didn't work. I'm not sure how that didn't work, but we could have been doing this an hour earlier. It wouldn't be 1 a.m. It would be midnight. Mm -hmm. I just I, I don't understand the infatuation with putting, what's this, one, two, six fights on at 10 o'clock. Six fights. And, and then... If you're going to put six fights on the main card, make it a 9 o'clock event, dude. This is just ridiculous. Right. And this is the thing. Like, you had a featherweight fight. Chaz, Skelly you had 11 versus fights total. Tom, Ninimaki. Now, there might be some people out there who are like, it, I, you know, and I'm sure these fighters, followers, and their families know who they are. But I'm talking about your the the majority of your fans out there don't know who they are. James Vick versus Valmir Lazaro. You know, Max Holloway. Obviously, when we got into the catchweight fight between Max Holloway and Clay Collard, you know one of the fighters. I don't know Clay Collard. I know Collard Greens. Collard Greens. I don't. But but Max Holloway. He 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 finished Collard out with a TKO. 
Then we got into the middleweight fights. Time out. Who what? the fuck is Max Holloway? Max Holloway, I've heard of. Yeah, he's been around for a minute. But he's not. But well, that's just it. That's the point. He's been Max around Holloway, on that page? Right. He's been, he's been around. Like he has a Wikipedia page. But that's it. We, George and I have always said, if you don't have a Wikipedia page in your fighter, you, it's... You don't, how will so we know about one, you? Because we're not going... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fighters. On well, the preliminary and main card did not do not so, even have wiki pages. Eleven fights, twenty-two fighters, seven of you don't even have your own Wikipedia page. And I know for a lot of you diehard people out there, that's a horrible reason not to back someone. Right. How do you follow these guys? Yeah. Let me know. How 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 are we supposed to know who the hell these people are? How are we supposed to see And them if you fight? go to UFC.com, they have a there's their prof their name with, with a, a blank mark picture. Looking like the Riddler. <laughs> how am I supposed to follow you? Right. This is Blake. You don't even have an avatar. And here's the thing: the invisible, invisible man avatar. I can't even speak it so late. And here's the thing: like, here's the thing. If, if you're trying yeah. to break into the market and you've busted into the market, I will give you that. You are trying your darndest. This is not the way to sustain <laughs> viewers. This is not the way to compel, com keep people compelled to keep coming back and watching. The average fan, you have to try to convince them. An East Coast fan to stay up till one o'clock in the morning to what to watch what. We saw a great end of the night. The last fight of tonight was great, but how many people on the East Coast stayed up to watch it? And just think about the people across the pond. Who okay? don't follow Benson Henderson. Like, if you didn't follow Benson Henderson, what incentive do you have to watch tonight's card? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's not a lot. I mean, and, and, and I don't know across the pond how it works or whatever, but they're, what, five, six hours ahead of us, so... Shit, 10 o'clock at night, it's starting at what? 4 o'clock in the morning. In the morning. So they're probably just setting their alarms and getting up early in the morning to watch it. Yeah, man, I hope them bamas got some DVR. Anyway, George and I are going to stop our fucking whining like little bitches, and we're going to go into the middleweight fight between Latest and Francis Carmont. Francis Carmont. Got Who got rocked. rocked. Um, straight got knocked out in the second round. Um, the only Latest people... Looks good. Hmm? He, he yeah. looks about as good as his hairline, dog. Oh, his hairline is busted. It's, yes, and I can say that because I shaved my head, which yeah. he should... He should do. Someone's got to talk to him. They talk to him about... You know, and you know what's the crazy thing about this? This guy is not even known for a stand-up, and he put the he put the fight away. So I don't know what that says for uh, Carmont. I mean, he's, he, he's, he's a striker, and he's going up against a guy who's not really known for a striker, more, you know, as for striking... More known for his ground game, and he gets put to sleep. Right. Well, that, and like in the next fight, Mike Pyle. If somebody told me about Ooh. Mike Pyle and showed me his pictures, like, yeah, that's a dude who likes to throw hands. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Jordan, Jordan wasn't having it. Yeah. His name's not Maine. It's Maine or yeah. what? I don't know. They Clipped say him with the, hit him with a left. And he, nang, nang. he was he was out. Cool. He represented Canada really hard today. Um, knocked him out in the first round TKO. I, now I will say the the last three. Uh, Fight. Matches they got a ev it got eventful then but but sometimes you're just so out of it you know like you were just tired I, I, you had a long day dude I watched Benson Henderson on the replay yeah. I'm not even kidding yeah. Kevin woke me up in time to watch me see Benson Henderson look for his contact lens uh, and now and that that's a, that'll pull us to the main event everybody between um, Rafael dos Anjos and, and Benson Henderson and it's um, and George and I've talked about this we we both we both were, were fans of Benson Henderson but we felt like he was slightly on the decline. He wasn't being, he's so athletic, he's so talented, but we felt like he wasn't being aggressive enough. And he wasn't known for putting guys away at, with his hands, you know? And he went up against a guy tonight that was very aggressive with his hands and he was very much pushing Henderson and he caught him. And you know what's funny? The cameras, George, didn't focus, they focused on the knee that kind of folded him over and when he, you, he got over him. But there was a punch that came before that that rocked Henderson. And no one seemed to catch that. You, know, you could see it in his eyes. He was hurt. And I'm like, oh, he's in trouble. And I don't think he ever recovered from that. That's that's what made him, uh, you know, be open for the knee. And then Dozanius just put him. He just he just swarmed his ass. Um, this, In other words, what, what Kevin's, what's going to do? Kevin's look, trying to say is... Where does Benson Henderson go next? In such a deep ass lightweight class. This, this dude, he might have to look at a weight cut or a weight gain, mm -hmm. and he might have to retool the way he fights. He might have to learn how to become more of a powerful striker. Because I'm, I'm the crazy thing is the game like, might go right past him. As he was walking, they were talking about his leg strength. That one time during the fight, he just did a fucking just shove kick and shoved the guy, knocked those angles literally on his ass. He's got such big thick muscular legs. Isn't that called legs. a teat kick? I don't know what. They just go. Yeah, just like. Psh, but 
they were talking about how big his legs are. They said his legs are big as a lot of middleweights, you know, and, and they are. He's so, and you know, it's hard. That, that when your legs are that big, dude, it, it weighs you down. If he had little bony legs, he could, he could probably easily make 45. How's that going to help his chin? It's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. So with that, we're going to move on to the next big UFC event, which is Saturday. Saturday. And I'm going to go ahead and let all y'all know right now. Okay. You let us know. You first. will get a preview, but you will get no review of this card. Mm -hmm. Period. Don't look for it. Don't ask for it. Don't want to hear it. Why? <laughs> sure, it's going to be. I'm going to be in Texas watching football. I will not you watch did. this card. I don't care about this card. I'm not going to Google, Wikipedia, tweet, mm -hmm. text. I don't give a shit because I'm watching LSU play Wisconsin on Saturday. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> and I don't blame you. I'm um, a horrible fan. Uh, yeah, you're. And who gives a shit? But okay. the, this is the bottom line: is if you really look at this a card, you've got the lightweight fight between Ramsey and you have one Carlos fight to Diego watch. Fiera. One you fight? have one fight that's going to cost you sixty fucking dollars. Yep. Have fun. That, that's, I'll read about it. Yeah. You got a women's bantamweight fight, Beth Correa versus Shayna Baszler. Then you got a lightweight fight, Tony Ferguson versus Danny Castillo. Now, and again, we're not shitting on these athletes. We right. fully understand what it takes to get into the octagon and compete. And you got to get up. Level. They got to get I injured. Get it. Right. But I don't get this. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. Yeah. You have way too many people in your. Uh, Company, I guess. Your farm of fighters. To I mean, be doing this and last, charging seventy. When was the last time we saw? I mean, and somebody I know somebody, right? But like some of these heavyweights fight, like other like that. Other, the heavyweight class is the weakest class, right? I mean, period. we haven't seen heavyweights fight in a while. Kane I mean, fought last the, time in nineteen seventy eight, right? And and then the guys that are underneath him, like there's been there's. I mean, we just have not seen that. Like, Don't worry, but we're but, but but the cards are set all the way up to UFC three hundred. Yeah. Why, why, like, man, you know, I, this is the thing I say. It's, I, and George and I had, a, we had a conversation before the camera came on and we we're upstairs watching the fight. We're like, wow, if the cards in our, our in our opinion, and I, and this is what we want to, want to, your guys' honest opinion out there. I feel like it's a decline. Like, I feel like if they keep doing this, like, you know, they're always going to be your fighters. Like, people are going to want to see John Jones, Daniel Cormier. That was great, but that card's not happening now, you know? And there's some other cards that, you know, people are obviously very pumped to see. But these little cards in between and they, a card like, need like UFC 177. I'd rather have nothing. Mm -hmm. I would seriously rather go back to the days. And for you people who question how long we've watched this, I remember when UFC was every other month. Right. I remember when UFC was once once a month. Yeah. And before that, I remember when it was run to the blockbuster and hope you get it on VHS. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I'd rather go back to that than see this watered down product. Right. And that's in my opinion, we as fans, and we should all have our own opinion. Mm -hmm. And maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one who sees it this way. Maybe you guys love this, and this is the way it should be. I think it's a watered down product. When yeah. you're running two events on the same day, and you're running what was it? This is I think August was the heaviest month. Like, yeah. they have five or six events? Something just insane this month. Right. And maybe it's, it's Dana saying, okay, we're trying to get more worldwide exposure by having these events in different places and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. But get rid of Fight Card and make that your event for the month, and let's all tune in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just or just have these events that are or, or more stacked, you know. Have these this this typical fight right now. I'm not I'm not this this UFC 177 that's coming up, except for the headline fight because it's obviously a title fight. All the other fights would be a preliminary card. It'd be a preliminary card. Yeah. It, 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 and now, we're paying for that. Now, Kevin and I fully understand after we've thoroughly trashed this card, it'll probably be one of the best UFCs <laughs> yeah, this that's year. We get that's it. why we're doing that, it. That's what's going to happen. That's why we're doing so it. So we're helping you people out who are going to spend $60 on this by talking cash shit about the card. Because that's how the card becomes out. Because that if we don't spend $60 on so it, then the card ends up being sensational. Everybody's happy. So we should talk it. And, and we're guaranteeing you guys a good card. And with that said, we're going to talk about the one fight on this card we know about, which is the rematch between TJ Dillashaw and Hennon Burrell. Right. And and if you've seen the promos, mm -hmm. Joe Rogan is thoroughly, thoroughly. What's what's the word? Thoroughly. Convinced. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus H. Mm -hmm. Convinced that this is going to be the the most devastating, wonderful version of Henan Burrell we've ever seen because this what he's coming off his first loss in nine years. Mm -hmm. T J Dillashaw prior to the first fight was like I got some form, and T J Dillashaw seems like he's holding his stance and he's going to continue to do. It's hard. When when you look at that first fight, he 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 owned him. 
And it's hard when a man owns your ass to come back in there and have something new. Because Dillashaw's like, I know you. You know? And I, like you've heard me say a lot of times on this show, very few fighters change. Yeah. They just, they just, you do what has always worked. And very few fighters change in such a short period of time. These guys didn't fight too long ago. You, it re- they really didn't. I mean, it was not very long ago. It wasn't like they're having a rematch a year later or a seven, eight, nine months later. You no, know, this smells a lot like what? You know, Frankie Edgar and Greg Maynard. It does. It this, does. This, this has a reeking odor of like a nine fight series. Yeah. I'm knocking shit over. Don't worry God about damn it. Damn King Kong feet. <laughs> Who you got winning? Huh? Who you got winning? Um. I think Dillashaw is going to do it again. I do too. Mm-hmm. I think Dillashaw, Dillashaw is going to win this, and then I don't know around. who Dillashaw is, it's, but I know Dillashaw. Dillashaw's win. cousin, right? Oh, Dillashaw, right? Yeah, it's it's his cousin who's saying it's two o'clock in the morning. Right. Eat ash, Tyrone. Now, um, it is time, and I'm going to abruptly. Whoa, wait, no, no, time out, time what? out, time out. The one thing we do need to talk about oh, in the yeah, main world. Yeah, we lost our mind. Kevin made a comment back there, and I'm sure one of you have already made a comment <laughs> down there about it. Oh, the fight's still happening. Look, right. just relax. What Kevin meant is the original scheduled date. Of the Cormier versus John Jones fight isn't happening right. because John Jones hurt somehow. He hurt one of those little twig sticks that holds mm-hmm. his body up. Mm-hmm. But the fight did get moved to January, so mm-hmm. the fight's still going on, and that's what we need to talk about because it raised it rose a big stink with a lot of you. Well, it should be Gustafsson's fight. No, stop. Mm-hmm. One thing you folks need to realize: the UFC, as much as they don't want to be, is just like WWF wrestling. Mm-hmm. You have a baby face and you have a heel. Mm-hmm. You have a good guy versus a bad guy. Right. And right now, we have somebody in like John Jones who's polarizing, either you love him or hate him, versus Daniel Cormier, who, honestly, I don't know too many people who dislike him. Yeah. So right now, you're tuning in to watch this guy lose. Right. So and, and, that's and, got more pull right now. It, than it does have more pull. And, and the thing is, is that you, we've seen the Chell Sun and promoted events in the past, the ones that this you can does see. the same thing. It's more, but this one. Oh, this one is, is real hatred. This is a volcano. The, the, these guys d- don't like each other. This is like kind of like the old Liddell Tito days. Like these guys do not fucking like each other. Um, you saw what happened off camera. You know, you saw what happened at the at the uh, the um, the the um, presser presser. You know, and uh, they don't like each other. They so fucking don't like, it. and that's what's so great about it. I got two questions for you. Mm-hmm. Does Gustafsson have a legitimate beef? Um. He, 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 you know what's funny? No. Because I, this is why. If it was anybody else that, that, to me, that John Jones was fighting, then I would say, yes, he has a legitimate beef. But this is my opinion of it, everybody. He is fighting Cormier that has never lost in the UFC. He's actually never lost in an MMA fight. He won the Strike Force bullshit, and then he came into the UFC, and he beat everybody in the heavyweight class that he faced. Then he came down here, and he's beat everybody. Beat the good contenders and everything. So he's undefeated. He 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 is more of a formidable opponent than Gustafsson was, because Gustafsson had losses in the UFC. Daniel Cormier has yet to lose in the UFC or in his MMA career. He has sucked weight. He could be fighting for the heavyweight championship. If he fought his training partner, Cain Velasquez, no one would say he he would rightfully so deserve a shot. Now, John Jones has faced everybody, including Gustafsson. He had his chance. Some people thought Gustafsson won the fight, but he didn't. You know, he didn't finish it, so he didn't win it in the judges' eyes. So next guy to step up would be Cormier. I think it's a little legit, legit. I don't think he should. But even though Cormier is filling in for an injured Gustafsson, this wasn't Cormier's original fight. This was Gustafsson's original fight. Mm-hmm. So I I understand. Yeah, you know why Gustafsson's yeah, upset. I can see that, right? I, I do get that. Mm-hmm. But Gustafsson doesn't have that genuine hatred, dislike for each other because there's a picture after the first Gustafus and Jones fight of them in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you right now, when Cormier and Jones go to the hospital, they won't be taking family photos together. No. They won't be happy. Yeah. Like, no matter how this fight goes, it's not like it's going to change things between them. They legitimately don't like each other. They hate, They don't like each other. And I'm going to tell you what, right now... Dana is jerking his dick. Right, and that's thinking, why he's oh keeping the fight alive. He, he's, he doesn't have to... Everybody he doesn't is, have to promote shit. He doesn't shit. have to promote shit because, you know, everybody's posting shit on Facebook. Everybody's posting shit on Twitter. People are going on the internet looking to see what's going on between these two guys. And this is the type of card you get excited for. Right. This, this card that's going to happen next week doesn't have that. And mm-hmm. that's what I think is, might potentially be the downfall of this sport. Something, the, you know what it is? It is, is that with the fighters, 
when you don't know, I mean, everybody, we love watching the fights. So George and I love it. We've been watching the fights forever, for years. A lot of you guys, honestly, that watched the show before you probably, a lot of you guys were probably in elementary school. Some of you guys. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the thing. When fighters have a history, even though they're not the best fighter, you know what I mean? If you know a little bit of history or if you know a little bit about this a fight. Backstory, a backstory, something. A backstory, something. It makes the fight more interesting. It just does. It makes the fight more interesting. And a lot of these fights we're seeing now, they're no-name guys. They don't have a lot of history. And, and obviously in time they will. But you're putting a bunch of no-name guys with no no history on a card together. Versus no-name guys. guys. And it's tough. It's just, it is. It's it, tough. It's, and here's the other thing. The other, the other thing is it's still a hard sport to follow. Look, I know these guys have come up and done their work in the, the minor leagues or the other things. There is no collegiate MMA. There is no minor league system. You can watch it and watch a guy come all the way up. Now, I'm sure some of you, I mean, I watched him in my backyard, beat up my cousin. That's awesome. <laughs> Unless you book. stream that shit, I can't watch yeah, it. Yeah, no one's watching that like, shit. So how, my thing is, again, I don't have shark fights. I don't have local MMA things. I don't have people shark to watch. I, there's no right. Home Depot Cup where there's I live. A, so there's a, there's it's, it's, what we're getting at is it's tough. And yeah. when you put out cards like this, it doesn't make it any easier. And it doesn't make me want to spend $60 to watch these guys. No. And that's unfair to the fighters because they need to get paid. They, yeah. But with that said, that's UFC. John Jones, Daniel Cormier. Kevin's going with Cormier. I'm going with I just want to see somebody leave on a stretcher match type thing. So that's where I stand. That, that, that's where I stand. Now.